Hello, boys and girls. Today, remember, is going to be our domain assessment for Greek myths, where you are going to show me what you know and what you have learned about all the Greek myths that we have talked about in class. So remember, we are going to be having a few different parts of this lesson. There's going to be some questions over vocabulary. There will be some questions about details from the story. And we will have some questions at the end where you will be able to answer in complete sentences. But I will give directions on that once we get there. Our first section is our vocabulary section where you're going to be answering some true and false questions for some of the vocabulary words that we have learned in class and that you put into your vocabulary books. So I'm going to read each sentence twice. And you are going to be listening for you if you think it is correct or not correct. If it's correct, you're going to click on the smiley face. If you don't think it's right, you think it's incorrect, you're going to click on the frowny face. We're going to do the first one together. Number one, sanctuary. Olympia was the home of a sanctuary or holy place devoted to Zeus. Number one, sanctuary. Olympia was the home of a sanctuary or holy place devoted to Zeus. Now, if you remember from studying our vocabulary words, sanctuary means a holy or safe place so that sentence is correct so you're going to click on the smiley face yes i did just give you one answer but remember we're doing that first question together the rest of the questions you will be doing independently and remember i will read each question twice and you'll click on the smiley face if you think the vocabulary word is used correctly in the sentence, or you'll click on the frowny face if you think it has been used incorrectly or not the right way. All right, number two, arachnids. Arachnids or spiders get their name from the weaver Arachne, who was turned into the world's first spider by the goddess Athena. Number two, arachnids. Arachnids or spiders get their name from the weaver Arachne, who was turned into the world's first spider by the goddess Athena. Number three, labyrinth. A labyrinth is someone or is something someone uses to weave a picture. Number three, labyrinth. A labyrinth is something someone uses to weave a picture. Number four, guidance. Many people need guidance to help them make an important decision. Number four, guidance. Many people need guidance to help them make an important decision. Number five, skilled. A person who is skilled at a job does not know how to do it. Number five, skilled. A person who is skilled at a job does not know how to do it. 
Alrighty, that was the first five questions. So go ahead and take a quick stretch break just for a couple of seconds while you wait until I count down from 10. That's how long you have to stretch. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. Okay, we are now going to continue on. You need to be back seated, not stretching anymore. You stop once I get done counting down. We're going to continue on through part one of our assessment with our vocabulary words. Number six, spectators. The spectators watched the football game with excitement. Spectators. The spectators watched the football game with excitement. Number seven, amusing. If something is amusing, it is dull and boring. Number seven, amusing. If something is amusing, it is dull and boring. Number eight, retrieve. If someone leaves his coat inside, he should retrieve it before going out in the cold. Number eight, retrieve. If someone leaves his coat inside, he should retrieve it before going out in the cold. Number nine, flattered. Someone would feel flattered if they were told their drawing wasn't nice. Number nine, flattered. Someone would feel flattered if they were told their drawing wasn't nice. Number 10, unraveling. The old blanket was unraveling and becoming worn and thin from being washed so many times. Number 10, unraveling. The old blanket was unraveling and becoming worn and thin from being washed so many times. Number 11, proof. If you see someone walking across the floor with muddy shoes, you have proof she was outside in the mud. Number 11, proof. If you see someone walking across the floor with muddy shoes, you have proof she was outside in the mud. Number 12, aimlessly. If someone wanders aimlessly, it means he has a definite plan and a purpose. Number 12, aimlessly. If someone wanders aimlessly, it means he has a definite plan and a purpose. Number 13, insisted. If someone insisted you do something, it means she really wants you to do it. Number 13, insisted. If someone insisted you do something, it means she really wants you to do it. Number 14, resist. It is best to resist eating too many sweets because they are not healthy for you. Number 14, resist. It is best to resist eating too many sweets because they are not healthy for you. We are now done with part one 
of your assessment showing me what you know about Greek myths. So go ahead and we are going to do another stretch and deep breathing break. So you can stand outside of your seat, but you need to stay by your desk. You can do some deep breathing, but you need to be back in your seat by the time I get to zero. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, and zero. Alrighty. Now you need to be back in your seat, ready to do part two of our domain assessment over Greek myths. For this part, I'm going to read several sentences about the Greek myths that we read together. If what I describe in the sentence is correct, you're going to click the smiley face. If what I describe in the sentence is not correct, you're going to click on the frowny face. Number one. Myths are fictional stories that sometimes try to explain things in nature. Number one. Myths are fictional stories that sometimes try to explain things in nature. Number two. The only characters in myths are gods and goddesses. Number two. The only characters in myths are gods and goddesses. Number three, the ancient Greeks thought Mount Olympus was the home of the 12 main gods and goddesses. Number three, the ancient Greeks thought Mount Olympus was the home of the 12 main gods and goddesses. Number four, Zeus and Athena are two of the 12 gods and goddesses that the Greeks thought lived on Mount Olympus. Number four. Zeus and Athena are two of the 12 gods and goddesses that the Greeks thought lived on Mount Olympus. Number five. The king of the gods punished Prometheus because his human creations weren't amusing. Number five, the king of the gods, Zeus, punished Prometheus because his human creations weren't amusing. Number six, when Pandora opened her box, she let out all of the evils and terrifying things that cause people sorrow. Number six. When Pandora opened her box, she let out all of the evils and terrifying things that cause people sorrow. Number seven. Hercules. Hercules completed 50 difficult labors. Number seven, Hercules completed 50 difficult labors. Number eight, Icarus listened to his father and did not fly too close to the sun. Number eight, Icarus listened to his father and did not fly too close to the sun. 
Number nine. The ancient Greeks believed they had different seasons because Persephone lived in the underworld for six months of the year. Number nine. The ancient Greeks believed they had different seasons because Persephone lived in the underworld for six months of the year. Number 10. Arachne boasted or bragged that she was a better weaver than the goddess Athena. Number 10. Arachne boasted or bragged that she was a better weaver than the goddess Athena. All right, that concludes or finishes part two of our domain assessment for you to show me what you know and what you learned about Greek myths. We are going to do another stretch and breathing break so you can stand out of your chair, get to stretch and um, do some deep breathing while I count down. Remember, when I get to zero, you need to have your pockets back in your seat and ready to go for part three. We're on the last part. All righty. Ten... Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one, and zero. Okay, you need to be back in your seat now, ready for part three of our assessment. Now, part three is where you are going to answer questions in complete sentences. We will have two questions and this is where you get to make a choice. You can either use the sentence starters on the board and type the answer to the questions out yourself or you can think of an answer, raise your hand and have me type in the answer for you so you can tell me what the answer is. But you have to tell me. I'm not telling you the answer. Alrighty. The first question is, how did the ancient Greeks explain the name of the Aegean Sea? Number one, how did the ancient Greeks explain the name of the Aegean Sea. So you're going to look up on our map, find the Aegean Sea, and remember what story told us about how the Aegean Sea came to be. So you're going to write some words, phrases, or sentences that come to mind when you hear each question. You can pause here if you'd like some think time. And whenever you're ready, plus, 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 press play. <laughs> I'm having a hard time. Press play on the video again so you can hear the last question and the directions for what you're supposed to do when you're done. Number two, describe one non-human creature or a creature that was not human that you heard about in these Greek myths. Number two, describe one non-human creature you heard about in these Greek myths. Remember, you can use the sentence starter on the board 
Or you can raise your hand once you have an answer and I will type it in for you. Once you're done, you need to press submit. Make sure you press submit and raise your hand to make sure that I received your test and you don't want to have to redo it again. So make sure I get it. And then you're going to get on exact path reading and you're really going to focus in on what you're doing on exact path reading because we do have a reading test next week. All of the schools are taking math and reading maps tests. So you really need to focus in on exact path because it will help you answer questions on the maps test. So really work on that and make sure that I got your assessment on my computer. Awesome work, guys. I'm so proud of you. Bye-bye.